Hi, I'm Lisa Kim. I'm speaking with four faculty members from the Stanford University School of Medicine. They've been appointed to the highest leadership positions with prominent national health care organizations within their respective fields of cardiovascular medicine. Here's what they have to say about their appointments. What are you most excited about being president-elect for the American Heart Association? As president of the Heart Association, I'm really excited about two things. First, to be the face of science to the community, and second, how do we think about new technologies to drive science and clinical care forward? Tell us a little bit about the society. So the Society for Vascular Surgery is the world's oldest and largest society dedicated to patients with vascular disease, uh, improving their health. So the Society of Vascular Surgery has developed a series of uh, patient-specific apps which allow us to do risk calculators for big operations based on individual patient uh, risk factors. And in fact, as we've updated many of our guidelines, which SVS also has on app-based format, uh, we are now encouraging uh, vascular surgeons nationwide to provide patients with their own individual risk. That's both a national initiative, but it's also a local initiative, and Stanford's really taking a leadership position in this area. Now, as new president of the International Society for Heart and Lung Transplantation, what fresh ideas are you bringing to the position? Well, one of the big things we're doing this year is we're going through a strategic planning process. I think we've always maintained sort of a really strong position in terms of heart transplant and lung transplant and mechanical circulatory support, or LVADs. Uh, but I think we're looking to see what we can do to increase the awareness of those therapies and maybe the availability of those therapies and knowledge about those therapies throughout the world. So how do you bring Stanford to the forefront of research in basic science? It's easy to bring Stanford to the forefront of basic science. We have some of the best basic science uh, on the planet in cardiovascular medicine. It's through medical conferences. It's through the use of technologies like social media. It's through medical meetings. All of that comes together in a way to really promote Stanford basic science. You know, Stanford has this reputation of getting referrals from all over the country when it comes to heart and lung transplants. Talk a little bit about that. Well, you know, I think we're a pretty aggressive program. We're a high volume program as well. And so we're really willing to take on cases that maybe other places aren't willing to take on. Patients that have had multiple operations in the past or uh, might need high risk mechanical circulatory support or might need multi-organ transplantation. And we do all of those things here, not on a routine basis, but fairly regularly. And I think that we're seen as a referral source for some of these really difficult cases across the country. And personally for you, your goals for the future? Well, my goals for the future, I'm biased uh, because uh, we've been you know, working on this concept of uh, iPS cells uh, for three major areas uh, for drug discovery. We want to be able to come up with uh, lower costs uh, for drug development so that it's cheaper, more effective, and we can give it to patients at an affordable price. We want to understand why disease occurs, so we're trying to use these heart cells for us to study the disease cell mechanisms. And then lastly, we want to implement this for precision medicine so that when I'm 65 years old and I need to take medications, I don't want to be the guinea pig. I want my heart cells to be the guinea pig. Tell me what medications I need to take. And based on that, I take the medications. So this is the holy grail of precision medicine, precision health.